Hey guys, we're Kevin and Taylor, and the day has finally come for us to reveal the entire cost of our van build. If you're new here, welcome to our channel. Kevin and I have been living in our self-converted Sprinter van for off and on for the past five and a half months. We've traveled all the way from Bar Harbor, Maine to Key West, Florida. Now we are headed west in hopes to get to Mexico in a few short months. Throughout our travels, we've been documenting the entire journey and sharing it with you on our travel series. So if you haven't seen that yet, I highly recommend going back and checking those episodes out. And you can even binge watch the entire series to catch up to where we are today. All right, so right in front of us, we have an entire spreadsheet of all of our van costs built out. So we will go through these one by one and go over each component of our van. And just keep in mind that for each component that we're covering, we do have a van build episode related to it. For this build, we are clumping things together from the most expensive purchases that we made to the least expensive. However, we are doing it per category. So it will be electrical, exterior, bathroom, kitchen. And so we can kind of clump it together, but still show you what cost the most money and what was the most affordable in our build. So the most expensive category, you can take a big guess, it is our electrical system. We have three 100 amp hour lithium battle-worn batteries. We have a 3000 watt Victron inverter, and we have an, a bunch of other electrical components underneath the electrical uh, bench here. I recommend checking out our van tour video or our electrical overview video to get a complete display and overview of our entire system but when you're looking at our electrical the total cost comes out to roughly five thousand two hundred forty three dollars including wiring and all of the fun little components there and then from our solar standpoint we have 400 watts of energy solar on the roof and that total cost came out to eight hundred ninety eight dollars which includes the renergy rover charge controller and the cables so total for our electrical system and our solar, it comes out to $6,142. Next, we have the exterior of our build, which we added quite a few things. We bought five windows, two bunk windows, two back door windows, and one slider window. They cost us $1,500. I would highly recommend getting windows because it brings in a lot more natural light. And especially for parking uh, or just driving in general, the sliding T vent window is uh, a blind spot if you don't have it so having that window makes driving a lot easier after that we did the roof rack and the roof deck the roof rack was for our solar panels that cost us roughly two hundred and ninety two dollars and then finally our roof deck which is composed of 80 20 aluminum composite decking and the cleats that hold either our surfboards out or our snowboards, which we never use for our snowboards, cost us $805. Next we have the Illuminus ladder, that cost us $725. We have the vent fan, which we definitely, definitely recommend to others. Um, it helps cool down the van, it helps get the hot air out of the van, so I mean it's just pretty universal. It helps us pull in cool air from the side bunk windows. Um, so we really, really like that feature. Uh, that cost us $430. Next, we have the backup camera, which we also would recommend. It helps us a lot in congested areas. It helps us with parking and things like that. So I would definitely recommend one of those. Ours cost us $400. And then finally, we did truck bed liner and the light bar. The truck bed liner itself cost us $35, and the light bar cost us about $50 bringing the exterior components of the van build to $4,237 total. One thing that we didn't include in this $4,237 is our tire upgrades because that was not part of the original van build. We did upgrade our tires to BF Goodrich KO2 all-terrain tires, which we highly recommend for anyone going anywhere in the snow. Uh, we got stuck in Vermont when we took the van for our first winter road trip on the side of the road into the shoulder we had to get towed out we filmed the entire thing you can check it out in our vermont travel episode i'll leave a link below but definitely would recommend getting your tires upgraded if you're considering doing anything off-road or in in uh harder travel conditions road conditions that costs about eleven $1 hundred dollars i don't know if i said that i'm not sure 
All right, so that wraps up exterior and solar electric. So those were pretty much our most expensive major components of the van. Now we're gonna move inside. Moving inside the van, something really important for me to have was a kitchen and a refrigerator that housed a decent amount of food. We did go with the 110 Dometic fridge, which cost us $1,299. Additionally, in our kitchen, we have our butcher block countertops. Those cost us $437 and that's for two we messed up so we had to buy an additional one so normally there would probably cost you closer to like $300 215 200. if you get the one from Home Depot which is the one we got um, but I think this number does include stain or that might fall into another bucket so you're looking at like roughly 250 bucks for a butcher block countertop other components of our kitchen include our backsplash, our faucet, stovetop, water filtration system, and our soap dispenser. Those cost us about $515. And you can't have a kitchen without plumbing and running water. So we'll jump over to plumbing, and this includes our entire water system underneath the left side, the driver's side of our bench here. And you can find the entire plumbing episodes in our van build series. Again, I'm gonna plug ourselves a little bit through this episode. Hope you guys don't mind, but the content is there for you to watch if you need to. But in our plumbing, a high level overview, we have a 33 gallon freshwater tank. We have two five gallon gray water tanks underneath the van. We have electric ball valves. We have PEX plumbing running through, a water pump, an electric hot water heater, and we have an exterior shower hose, and we use shark bite fittings for majority of our plumbing pipes and routing and all that stuff. So that number comes out to $651. I'm sure you can do, you can find cheaper or make it more expensive depending on your needs. Another important component of the van for me was a shower and a bathroom. So we did purchase the Nature's Head composting toilet that cost us $1,023. And our shower, which consists of FRP board, backer board, sealant, the faucet, and the teak cost us $417. So this came out to be a cheaper part of the van build than we expected. Um, however, it is something that we use daily and we would not get rid of no matter what. So the total cost of our shower toilet area cost us $1,441. Okay, moving on from our shower, you might be wondering, well, when are you gonna talk about wood? Because we have a lot of wood in our van. Um, across the entire build, from the receipts that I gathered, okay, <laughs> in terms of plywood, poplar, shiplap, the total cost that I was able to capture is $907. From a hardware perspective, so the screws that we use for the van, we spent about $118 on screws and other miscellaneous material there. Um, from a painting perspective, we spent $250. And then for our cabinetry, which includes drawer slides, the hardware to pull the cabinet doors open, the hinges. Gas struts. The gas struts, yeah, thank you. We spent roughly $356. So in total for all of our wood, we spent roughly $1,632, which on paper sounds really not too bad, not expensive at all. No. I was thinking we were gonna spend a lot more. Maybe there's some lost receipts or something, but $1,600 for all of our wood sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Next, we're moving into the bedding area and the table area, the foundation to be able to separate our garage space from our living space cost us $551, and that's made up of steel studs and 80-20. Correct, yep, steel studs and 80-20. Steel studs you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's, and the 80-20, you know where you get it. And then on top of that is obviously our bedding and our mattress. So our mattress and our upholstery cost us $879. Like we said before, we did buy our fabric at Hobby Lobby, so we did get a cheaper price on that, and then we found a local guy who was able to upholster our mattress for pretty cheap. Like um, five, six hundred bucks or something like that? Yeah, right. which helped us keep the cost down on that. So we did not do the upholstery ourselves. We did find somebody to do that 
who was a professional. So that can vary depending on where you are and who you get to do that or if you're able to do that yourself. All right, we're coming down to the home stretch here. So for other uh, individual items, we got the Lagoon Swivel Table, which is what we're using right now. Uh, this thing is fantastic and it holds our kitchen table. That costs roughly $201 with tax and everything. Um, on the floor, we do have life proof flooring, vinyl flooring from Home Depot. We spent roughly $191 on our floor. And we went with the life proof. I mean, it is more expensive, but since we're always getting in and out of the van and we're in like snow or near the beach, we wanted something that was really going to stand up to the constant use of it, which is why we went with the more expensive life proof brand. Um, there's obviously cheaper or more expensive options for this as well. From the flooring, another individual item is our swivel seat, which we have on our passenger seat, and that just allows us to open up the space a little bit more, give us some more square footage, and utilize that front area that otherwise would be pretty much useless from a living perspective. And that costs $281, and Taylor's arguably, you know, one of our better purchases that we made and Taylor really pushed for this. I was kind of against it. The window covers. These are not very cheap, especially if you get the good ones that are made by companies, usually in the Pacific Northwest. That's where we got ours. Um, they're super late, lightweight. They have magnets all around the side so that they stick to the metal on the around the windows. So they easily attach to the window. And then they have this snap piece that goes around the whole thing so that when you're not using them and you want to be able to see through the windows, they easily fold up and they're out of the way. We did purchase those for the back window and the slider door window, and those cost us $485. We also have window coverings for the bunk windows, the windshield and the cab windows. However, we did make those ourselves with the same fabric as our bedding or our cushions um, and Reflectix. So those probably cost us roughly like $100. Uh, yeah, give or take. And then lastly, we have tools. Obviously you need tools to build a van. We did not have much. We borrowed some tools from my dad, her dad, and then we were basically going to Harbor Freight every other weekend for tools that we needed and we're on low budget. So we spent roughly $265 on tools, at least what we captured here. Okay, so the entire cost of our van, after going through each component or category, we spent a total of $21,702. And this is give or take a few thousand dollars, one or two probably. I'm sure there are things that we forgot to add into our spreadsheet or things where we lost the receipt and we don't know how much they cost, but this is a good estimate of how much our van build costs, give or take a few thousand dollars. <laughs> So if you're looking to build a van and want a van build similar to ours, you can expect to spend roughly 20000 to 24000 something like that, depending on your electrical needs, what type of wood you want to buy. We opted to go the higher route with birch, poplar, more expensive wood, and more expensive components in our van because this van is not going to be with us forever. We know we're going to sell it eventually, and we want to have the best product possible when we someday put it on the market. So if you have any questions about the cost of our van or how we built the van, I first recommend you check out our van build series. But if you already did that, then drop a comment below and we'll do our best to answer it. And if you want to binge watch our travel series, then check them out as well. Like Taylor mentioned, we start all the way from Bar Harbor, Maine, take you down to Key West, and now we are moving west into the snow, into the cold weather, and show you what it's like to live in a van in the winter. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank you guys.